Welcome, everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's the 22nd of January, 2024. Thanks for being here. Um, topics that I've got that I'm aware of, we've got upcoming calendar to discuss, news, action items, community activity, and governance topics. And under each of those, oh, and oh, and Alyssa is here. Very good. Thanks, Alyssa, for joining us. Hi. Any other, any topics that aren't on the agenda that need to be brought to the agenda for today? Okay, then let's go ahead. So next weekly release, 2.442 will be Wednesday, not Tuesday. And that's because it will be a security release. So it will be on the same day as the release of Jenkins 2.426.3, which is also a security release. Um, look forward to that. Thanks to the Jenkins security team. Details of the contents of the security release are intentionally held until after the release. So that there will be a, a, an advisory published and refer to the link here for the details that Kevin Garoge shared when he announced the, the, pub, the upcoming publication. We've got the next LTS baseline selected and special thanks to Alexander. Um, Alex, anything that you want to highlight in terms of 2.440 and getting ready for its upcoming release? Nothing in, particu nothing in particular. I'm waiting for the security release to take place before starting the backport to make sure I don't get into any conflicts. Right, and, and that makes perfect sense because certainly the security fix will have to be backported in addition to in addition to any pending backports. Good. Very good. I've got an open question to board members and other attendees. We're currently scheduled to have a board meeting the day after Fosnum. I propose to cancel it because at the time we're scheduled, I'll be in a New York airport. Uh, Basel will be somewhere in Europe uh, out of the office and others will be probably in various transit various positions of transit. I think Kevin's probably traveling. Alyssa will be traveling. Any objections if we simply cancel the meeting or would you feel like we need to rather reschedule it? So I'm going to assume unless there are objections that I'm going to go ahead and cancel it. Uh, is that okay with everyone? Great. Okay. Canceled. So Mark to remove from Mark, remove from the calendar. Great. I will do that. Okay. Then on the major events that are upcoming, we've got the Contributor Summit, February 2nd, Friday in Brussels. Uh, agenda topics are identified there. Thanks to John Mark Mason for his work. After the Contributor Summit, we'll have a dinner for everyone who attended the Contributor Summit. Thanks to CloudBees for sponsoring that. Uh, so, Alex, look forward to seeing you there. I hope you're still planning on being in Brussels for FOSDEM. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much. Then Saturday and Sunday, we've got FOSDEM in, in Brussels. Alyssa's coordinating the assignments of people to staff the Jenkins table at the conference. Others can wander the conference, attend presentations, coordinate ad hoc programming sessions, all sorts of things that we think will be a real positive. And then Alyssa and Basil and I are all planning to be at the Southern California Linux Expo in mid-March. That'll be in Pasadena, California, here in the United States. And there will be a Jenkins booth there. Thanks to the Linux Expo for letting us have that booth. And thanks to Alyssa for helping staff it. Any questions on upcoming calendar? So next topic was news and reminder security release, right? Merges to Jenkins core are currently blocked so that we don't risk disrupting that weekly that weekly release. That means though that we've got a set of 18 or more pull requests piled up ready for merge that will come in after the uh, after the the release is done. And we thank Docker for their continued sponsorship of the Jenkins project. We had a little bit of excitement where we got a message that said our sponsorship had been canceled, but they've reinforced that no, not really. The sponsorship continues. Very grateful to them. 
any questions on either of the news items? Okay, action items. Um, attribution entries for the downloads page with Jenkins sponsors. Now, Kevin had implemented a, a change on the root page so that Red Hat is now removed from that root page. Uh, any other any other comments there or discussion that's needed there? There's no update from my side, but I am still hoping to get to this pretty soon. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much, Basil. And I'm going to delete that item on Red Hat Remove because it was removed. Kevin, I think that was weeks ago, wasn't it, that that removal happened? Uh, about a week or two ago, yeah. So it's it's done regardless. Great. Thank you. And yes, our donation request to AWS was submitted before the end of the calendar year. We hope to have an answer by end of January. If not, we then need to remove AWS from the root page since they didn't donate any funds to the Jenkins project in 2023 at all. And if they choose not to donate in 2024, we shouldn't list them as a, as a sponsor. Kevin, anything you want to report on the Chinese Jenkins site? Uh, nothing right now. No changes as of last week. We'll be, or uh, last meeting, we'll be picking it up for sure after Fostum. Uh, that's just priority number one for the time being. So um, yeah, we'll come back to it. And um, hopefully by that point, we'll be able to come to Damien with the right questions and uh, plans so that we can have a constructive conversation about it. Great. Thank you. Okay. On the Contributor Summit, we've got 20 plus confirmed attendees that will be at the Contributor Summit. Uh, Agenda is being coordinated by John Mark Messon. And you can find the the details of the agenda actually here in the draft agenda proposal. So he's got roughly the first half of the day is reports from the officers and the board. And the second half of the day is focused on presentations from contributors, things like the what's it take, what has it been required to do the CloudBees HA solution on top of Jenkins. Alex and Damien, we're looking forward to a discussion about what will it take to remove Blue Ocean? And what does it mean to deprecate Blue Ocean? And then several other discussions. Basel has proposed a, a topic on searching the code with the usages and plugins tool and looking forward to that. And Oleg Nanashev has proposed Jenkins file runner update. Basel, on the usage and plugins, anything you want to share here about what that will mean? Oh, that was silly. Um, no, I plan to do a demo of how to use this tool uh, for both um, searching for Java usages as well as some uh, some other use cases, like looking for uh, jar files as you split a library plugin uh, into a separate plugin and things like that. Um, so this should basically just be a quick demo because this, this tool isn't actually too hard to use, but it does have a somewhat high learning curve. So I'm hoping that by uh, showing that demo, I can demystify some of the um, uh, difficulty around getting started with this. And it, it ends up being very helpful when you're doing code reviews, if you want to assess whether some change is going to be a breaking change or not. Um, so I'm hoping that we can make that easier for people to use by educating uh, about these use cases. So when when I'm considering a pull request that's proposing to remove something, that's a one of those potential breaking change examples you gave of hey, changing a a method signature or deleting the method. I this tool can help me. Yeah, yeah, um, it does require you know a lot of disk space because it downloads every single plugin that's in the update center. So it requires a few gigabytes of disk space the first time you use it. Um, and yeah, there are, there are some other confusing things about it. Like if you're searching for a class, you have to use slashes. And if you're searching for a method, you have to use periods and, you know, various other things that don't make a whole lot of sense. But once someone explains it to you, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. Thank you. Any other topics that others would like to see on the agenda or that, that we should be proposing to John Mark? Okay, next topic then is my ongoing Java 11, 17, and 21 
I am sorry. I still have not made progress on this. I hope to make it before FOSDEM so that I can stand up in front of the FOSDEM Contributor Summit and say something more than I've not made progress. That means I've got about a week and a half to make some real progress here. It needs what it needs is a prototype implementation in the in terms of checklists or steps based on some of the things we did from Java 8, but some of the things are, are really very different. When we drop support for Java 11 in October of 2024, that will be a, the beginning of a drop every two years pattern where we'll want to get good at this using using these checklists. Any questions there? Okay, so next topic, I'd ask Alyssa Tong if she'd be willing to to come to us and talk briefly about Jenkins Awards. So what they are, uh, what the process is, et cetera. Alyssa, can you go ahead? Yep. So um, hi, everybody. Um, so the Jenkins Contributor Award recognizes individual contributors from the community. So just like past years, and we've done this um, several years now, CDF is hosting this event. Um, Winners will be announced on April 16th to the 18th at their CDCon's event in Seattle. So the three categories for contributor awards are most valuable advocate. This is for people who help Jenkins through organizations of Jenkins meetup, virtual events, you know, speaking opportunities. Um, and then there's the most valuable contributor award and this is for people who has made the most contributions through features bug fixes and development efforts and lastly the security mvp award this is for um, people who provide excellent security reports and resolving security issues um, this remains the same as in previous years, so nothing has changed there. So nominations is still going to be done via GitHub issues. And thank you so much to Kevin, who created these issues just right before this meeting. So the issues are up. Um, so it's open for nominations. And then we it will stay open until February 19th. That is when we start voting. And that will be done via a Google form. 2023 winners cannot win again this year. So we have to choose new people and that's always uh, much welcome. And then um, lastly, I will write a blog uh, with all the important details and important dates and links and such um, to this award program. That's pretty much it. So questions from board members or from others? Uh, just wanted to share, Mark. The, I posted the uh, links to the issues in the chat. So if you want, if you want to put those in the agenda as well, they're right there. Ah, oh, thank you. Thanks very Thanks, much, Kevin. Okay, so the what you created, Kevin, is three issues. Is that that what? Yep. So one issue each for each award, um, and then like last year, we'll do the same thing where each award will get its nominations in that issue and proceed from there. Okay, so I'll put those in just as hyperlinks. So most valuable contributor, security MVP, good, great. And so security MVP, it's been not just members of the security team, but also people who submitted really excellent, excellent issues, right? Really, so somebody who made a, a contribution by virtue of finding and reporting a, an issue. Did, right. Do I remember correctly? Yep, they're spot on. Okay, great. And those who have won in previous years, years prior to 2023, are eligible. Am I also correct there? So a yes. 2022 winner or a 2021 winner is eligible. It's only if you'd won in 2023 that you're not eligible. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, in terms of announcement, once it's announced, I assume we publicize it on the on the Jenkins website as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, we usually blog about it, and then LinkedIn um, and uh, tweet as well. 
and CDF will do the same. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from others? Okay. Next topic then was on the attribution request here, action items in progress. I don't think there's anything additional we need to note here. We'll, we'll evaluate the sponsors page as it evolves and discuss it further. Next me next meeting then for the discussion will be in about four weeks or it will be in four weeks. Any questions on that one? Okay, next topic then, and this one, I apologize, it's new added to the agenda after I published the draft agenda to the developer mailing list. We got the Azure expense report for December for Jenkins Infra, and it was a set, we were at seven thousand dollars, and I think CDF was hoping for six thousand. So CDF said, "Hey, Mark, Damien, what's the what's your estimate for budget? We can't run hot all year because CDF has not budgeted enough funds to do more than we had originally estimated. Current estimate is that January we will spend sixty five hundred. And so based on that, working with Damien, he and I worked up a, a counter proposal to CDF for a new budget. We asked for a revised budget of 67.5 total for the year. CDF said, yes, that's okay, but you can't go higher than that. And what Damien is seeing is that the infra team has seen that, oh, that there are additional costs that are arriving. And so they're going to make some further changes during January and early February to reduce costs further. One of them is looking at switching what type of file storage we're using. It's a surprisingly large expense. And the other is for a potential savings of 500 or more a month, moving ci.jenkins.io from one set of hosts on Azure to another. And positive note, the, the 40K donation is being consumed. We're using parts of it, but not consuming as fast as CDF would have liked. Any questions on the, the Azure expense report? Is this kind of status information helpful for the board? I'm hoping, I think that we want this and maybe I should systematically put an every three months report. I've just been uh, nominated for and elected as the CDF treasurer. So I'm responsible to report these kind of things to CDF. And therefore it's a good excuse for me to also report here. Okay, last topic, AWS credits donation was submitted before end of calendar 2023. We hope to hear by end of 2024. So hopefully we'll know by the time of FOSDEM if they've, if they've approved a donation for us or not. Any other topics that need to be discussed here at Governance Board? Uh, I just wanted to uh, throw out there, Mark. Uh, so this week, we would normally be publishing Uli Hafner's Spotlight on the 24th, but with the security release and everything else going on, uh, we're going to publish Uli's tomorrow. So uh, the normal two-week period is going to uh, st stay in place. We're just publishing Uli's tomorrow so that it doesn't get lost in the shuffle of everything else that's going to be announced on Wednesday. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll note that here in the being published, and that's being published tomorrow. Correct. The 23rd. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other topics? Oops. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll stop the recording.